morning, Mr. Ambassador. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jen Tebow, and I lead the development activity for Super Hornet and Growler in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about where we sit with the production system and the production uh, status, as well as the capabilities of the Block 3 and the Advanced Growler. To be clear, do I, I can do it. Right. The, the Super Hornet is the most proven and affordable multi-role fighter out there today. Paired with its sister platform, the Growler, this combo brings unmatched capabilities to the fight. Over decades, the U.S. Navy has continued to invest in step function capability on the Hornet and the Super Hornet, now culminating in the Block 3 Super Hornet and the Advanced Growler. This has allowed these two platforms to be effective in multiple missions uh, up, up through today and in the future while continuing to operate in harsh environments. Next. Okay, the Block 3 Super Hornet li uh, line, or the, the Super Hornet line is alive and well. Um, we have a program of record of over 550 Super Hornets and 160 Growlers. We will, on the this year, deliver the last of the Block 2 Super Hornets to the U.S. Navy. That also includes two Block 3 test jets that we'll deliver to the Navy this spring. <laughs> then we'll transition to a year's worth of uh, production builds for Kuwait. And then in 2021, we'll start delivering the full Block 3 Super Hornet to the U.S. Navy um, under our multi-year four contract, which includes 78 Block 3 Super Hornets. In addition to our traditional production line in St. Louis, we have a service life modification production system that Captain Becker alluded to. That is both in St. Louis and in San Antonio, Texas. Through that service life modification production system, starting in the early 20s, we'll be converting all Block 2 Super Hornets to Block 3 Super Hornets. Um, this will continue from the early 20s late into the 2030s, keeping an alive, active production system for the Super Hornet uh, and an active uh, and healthy supply chain. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Block 3 Super Hornet capabilities now. Um, the Block 3 Super Hornet is networked and survivable, and we've made changes from the Block 2 to Block 3 to make it just that. Uh, we've done this in, in a couple of, of areas. One is really deep resetting the digital architecture of the airframe. And we've done that through the advanced cockpit system, the distributed targeting net, uh, processor network, networked, or our DTPN, and an advanced tactical data link, the ATDL. And I'll expand on those three things. The advanced cockpit system is really highlighted by the large area display, which is a 10 by 19 big touch uh, screen piece of glass in the cockpit that will change the way that the air crew interface with the jet and allow more situational awareness and flexibility to take advantage of the decision aids that are coming with Block 3 and the Advanced Growler. The DTPN, the Distributed Targeting Processor Network, is really an adjunct processor, a big, a big computer that increases the computing power of the Super Hornet. And this is to, in, a, in order to pull in uh, all of the data of the battle space and really um, process that to create the decision aids necessary for air crew. The advanced tactical data, data link is a low latency, high bandwidth data link that allows for more on and off board communication uh, to both pull in all of the, the data that we're collecting from the, the battle space in the modern threat environment, as well as pushing it back out to the air wing so that everybody can utilize that information. On the airframe side, we're also doing some upgrades with Block 3. We're changing it from a 6,000 hour service life to a 10,000 hour service life. Um, we'll do that right off of the production line and that's really the, the point of the service life modification line that I talked about earlier. Um, so that increases the service life of, of the jet and at the same time re reduces overall life cycle costs. In addition, we're adding conformal fuel tanks. We're putting, uh, putting those on the, on the top of the airplane on the leading edge extension and it's really a low drag way to add 3,500 pounds of gas, allowing the Super Hornet to fly further, um, fly longer, and potentially faster depending on what, what loadouts that you carry. Um, a program of record of its own is the Erst, and uh, it, although it's not particularly part of Block 3, it is critical to the Block 3 capability, and it provides that long range 
um, passive targeting in a high threat environment uh, and its counter, self, counter stealth capability <coughs> because it operates in the IR spectrum and Earth's infrared search and track. All of these capabilities are, are well underway in development. Um, the Block 3 test jets that we'll deliver to the Navy this spring include um, all of that uh, digital reset of the architecture that I talked about at the beginning. Um, so the Navy will be getting all of that this spring. We flew the advanced cockpit system already last year and continue to fly it into this year for testing. And last year we also flew um, conformal fuel tank prototypes as part of the risk reduction uh, as that design effort continues. Um, okay, I think we'll go to the next chart, um, which is me still. Sorry, I keep <laughs> that. Um, all right, so common tactical picture. This is really important to the Super Hornet Block 3 and the Advanced Growler. Um, this is what resetting that digital architecture really does for us. And this is about enabling long-range long range targeting in, in a really um, complex and, and high-dense threat environment. So to break it down, um, the Advanced Tactical Data Link will bring in all, all of that information. The, um, the, the adjunct processor, the DTPN, will turn through that data and really turn that data into knowledge for the air crew to reduce targeting timelines, decision aid timelines, um, as well as increase situational awareness of the battle space. Um, that, is, that is what all of these things bring uh, to the warfighter. Okay. Moving on to Growler. Uh, so no Air Force will be effective in a modern, uh, with a modern threat without a Growler. Um, and the advanced growler brings increased processing, enhanced sensors and apertures, and air crew decision aids. We'll do that through bringing over some of the block three capabilities that I talked about with um, resetting that digital <coughs> architecture, so including the advanced cockpit system, the DTPN, as well as the advanced technical data link. Um, that goes along with the theme of keeping that 90% commonality with the Growler and the Super Hornet that um, the U.S. Navy has been able to enjoy for years. Um, it also will bring over the conformal fuel tanks, which will allow the Growler to uh, go further and, and fly longer. And then it includes you know, increased uh, advanced jammers and advanced apertures and sensors. So to talk a little bit about why the Growler is so important to the modern threat and, and why no Air Force can be effective without it, I'm going to walk through the, um, the threat frequency spectrum. So the rainbow there is really the RF threat frequency spectrum with KU band at the top in the red and VHF and purple down at the bottom. And then it breaks up the, uh, the buckets of fire control at the top and early warning at the bottom. And this is really the electromagnetic spectrum um, that we see out there today. The band that you see going across is really what um, aircraft that are optimized for stealth, that's really where they operate and where they can be the most effective. So without <coughs> a growler, we're missing the electromagnetic spectrum of, of everything else that you see there. <coughs> and can, and uh, stealth aircraft can really only be effective in that, in that band. The modern threat is getting smarter today about where we've uh, traditionally operated, and that's why it's so important to bring the Growler and the Advanced Growler to the fight. Um, it brings in not only the jamming techniques to protect the assets that are going in, but it also brings the information and the decisions sh decision aids needed to inform that entire kill chain uh, and also help close the kill chain of the entire air wing. Uh, Boeing is uniquely positioned in the co this competitive space to provide this Growler capability uh, to Finland. And that's all I have for the capability piece of the brief. Uh, look forward to answering your questions. <laughs>